And we're back. Alright. Let's read. Lycanthropy, the ways of the wolf. Chapter 3. Oh. Lycanthropy, the ways of the wolf. Fine. Read it for me, whatever. Chapter 3. No, don't read it again. There are two categories of werewolf cases. False or lycanthropic disorder cases and genuine werewolf cases. Lycanthropic disorder. Lycanthropic disorder is a mental condition in which the subject, called a lycanthrope, believes that he or she is a werewolf. The subject does not actually change shape, but is nevertheless capable of being as dangerous as an actual werewolf. Most cases of supposed werewolfry are really the work of lycanthropic disorder victims. Man to beast. In real werewolves, a physical change to wolf form does occur. The change can be voluntary, at will, or can be forced by certain cycles of the moon and certain sounds, such as howling. Interesting. Werewolves and immortality. Werewolves are immune from aging and from most physical diseases due to the constant regeneration of their physical tissue. They can therefore be virtually immortal. However, they can be killed by any wound that destroys the heart or the brain, or any form of death that causes brain or heart damage, such as hanging or other oxygen deprivation methods. The mind of a werewolf. Though primarily a true wolf while in wolf form, there is some proof that the werewolf retains enough knowledge to assist his killing. Recognition of victims, evasion of traps, and human cunning have all been seen on werewolf cases. That oxygen deprivation method sounded kinky. Becoming a werewolf. There are several ways to become a werewolf. They include being given the power of shape-shifting through sorcery, being cursed by someone whom you have wronged in some way, called the Lyconia Curse, being bitten by a werewolf, and being born to a werewolf. In each case, the blood of the subject becomes tainted or cursed. Curse. Damnation. A person who becomes a werewolf against his will, birth, curse, or bite, is not completely damned until he tastes of human blood. Mm. Once he does, his soul is eternally damned and nothing may redeem him. Even without tasting of human blood, however, as long as the taint lays upon the immortal soul, it cannot enter into heaven and will remain chained to the mortal plane upon death. Ah, that's kind of weird. Werewolf packs. Like real wolves, werewolves can live alone for many years, yet the instinct for a pack often leads them away from their secretive lifestyles into revealing their nature to a priest or close associate or converting another to a werewolf-free for companionship. This is when the otherwise cagey werewolf opens himself to detection. Werewolf packs cause immense destruction. A pack consists of one werewolf who became a werewolf through sorcery, birth, or curse. In other words, his is the original tainted blood. This werewolf is called the Alpha Werewolf. The remaining werewolves in the pack are called Beta Werewolves because they became werewolves through the bite of the Alpha and carry the Alpha's tainted blood. Hmm. I'm just going to pause the video for a minute because my phone's ringing. One moment. All right, and we're back. So she was going to tell us about... Alpha and Beta Werewolves. That. The relationship between Alpha and Beta Werewolves is a complex one. Once a subject is bitten by a werewolf, his or her life and death are doomed to the werewolf curse. The victim does, however, have some hope. As long as they themselves do not taste of human blood, the curse is reversible. If the Alpha Werewolf is killed through some action of the Beta, the Beta's curse is broken. It is important to note that whether the Beta Werewolf was bitten by the Alpha Werewolf himself or by another Beta, it is the Alpha who must be destroyed, the source of the original tainted blood. It is also an interesting note that since Betas and Alphas share the same common blood, an Alpha cannot physically harm a Beta of his own bloodline by his own hand without inflicting the same injury upon himself. Mm. However, if a Beta is harmed or killed by another, it does not affect the Alpha. Symptoms of Werewolfry When hunting for a werewolf, it is important to remember that your biggest clues will come through your suspect's personalities. Becoming a werewolf is not transparent, no matter how the victim tries to hide it. 
The tainted subhuman blood greatly alters the subject's own mind and personality, even physical appearance. Therefore, look for symptoms in your human suspects that include increasing violence, increasing aggression, unprovoked rages, insomnia, restlessness, and other bizarre behavior. Unfortunately, over time, these symptoms can be brought under control, so do not rely upon them exclusively. Are you trying to tell me I'm a werewolf? Uh, or at least with my insomnia and restlessness. A good example of this comes from a case reported by the ancient priesthood society Manos del Sol of Brazil. A rash of werewolf killings there was tracked to a high-ranking officer in the army. The society became aware of the man mainly through rumors of his violent behavior and changed personality. The case was successfully resolved with a man's capture. Manos del Sol? Men of the Sun? I wonder if they're like Schottenjägers, only Brazilian. Interesting. And get a completely different voiceover. I do not sus- oh. I do not suspect that that was a cover-up. Victor Ritter. Nine, 1720 to 1753. I almost read that as 1920 to 1753, which would have been interesting. It's in English! Why? Numerous deaths at the hands of a marauding wolf being recorded in a neighboring county, I set out to see if I could determine the cause. There had been rumors of a werewolf, and the dark signs did indeed seem to be present. The deaths had all occurred within a 40-kilometer range of woods, and at the heart was the village of Alfeng. My assistant and I set a trap a short distance from the village. Though the beast had shown a propensity for human flesh, livestock had also been taken. Interesting. It was a newling lamb we loosed in the thicket as a lure. We awaited downwind. For two nights, the lamb bleated to no purpose, and once we had to fend off a hungry fox... But at last, the beast himself took the bait. I might have missed him. The night was so dark, and the wolf himself was black. But my assistant saw the light of his eyes, and I heard the lamb's cries turn fearful. He had the poor dumb lamb by the throat when we sprang. Mewling, mewling. Sorry, that's what I, that's what I think every time I hear the word mewling. He was swift, and might have escaped, but his fatal mistake was to attack rather than run. My dagger struck through his chest and into his right lung. Ouch. As I had agreed, we bound the wolf and tied shut its jaws. We brought it home to Rittersburg, still breathing, and turned it over to the magistrate. I pray for the man's unfortunate soul. May the law be swift and merciful. Interest oh, crap, the rain started again. We might not be able to keep reco recording in a minute. God be praised for aiding his servant. From his hand came the strength and wisdom to end the killing. Victor Ritter, Schottenegger, 20 April 1750. In English, for no reason. None whatsoever. Okay. But I wonder if Christian Ritter's journal is here. I didn't click on that. I clicked on the table. I totally clicked on the table. What are you doing, lady? Christian Ritter, born 10 January 1820, ordained a Schottenjäger, died 4 March 1864. The 4th of March. That's the date on the letter. So she takes it with her. We might as well read it while we have it. 3 January 1864. I am now in Prussia. The beast that brought me here has so far bested me. He is secretive and skillful. He has much self-control, unlike what I'd been led to expect. He seems to know almost before I do where and when I will be stalking him. He turns up his nose at my lures. Three more disappearances have occurred, and I'm no closer to learning his identity nor finding his lair. I can't even prove he took them. Not a single corpse has been found. March 3rd, 1864. I've had a break at last. The key was in front of me all the time. The black wolf, he so daringly calls himself for all to hear and none to truly see. It is worse than I could ever have suspected. He is not just a beast, but a monster. His jaws are already around some of the best throats in Europe. I return to Ritter's book tonight. I must warn those in danger and get someone to assist me. I am in over my head. 
I'm just a little boy. Nobody loves me. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Sorry. All right, we're gonna sit down, and then we're gonna. Call, well, we're out of time, and the rain is really, really, really coming down now. So we'll see you soon. Bye.